Hello everybody, how are you? How are things in your world, in your world, nighttime here in Los Angeles? And this is going to be another community spotlight where I break down a community to give you the information you need to either enjoy it more when you visit or perhaps even move there. And this is a really fun one because it's a very high-income neighborhood that we're going to talk about called Rancho Palos Verdes. Now, it's on a peninsula that juts out from California, kind of like a little heel spur there in between Long Beach and Terminal Island, uh, just south of Torrance, but between L.A. and Long Beach, essentially. Now, it's got some of the best views of the Pacific Ocean along the entire West Coast. And so you have some uh, very attractive plots of land, some beautiful homes, and therefore some high-income uh, peoples living down in Rancho's Palace. There it is. But it's also true that even before the Europeans came rolling over the hills uh, with their dreams of reality TV and square dancing, that the native tribes that lived in that area were also for in relation to the other tribes in California and in the West, the Southwest in particular, were very high income. They had game consoles. They had color TV, okay, that they developed. It was a version they developed. It was a little different. But nonetheless, over the years, some of the smarter uh, people in the Native American tribes moved to Rancho Palos Verdes because of the great views. I mean, what more do you want coming out of your abode uh, in the long history of the Native Americans in that area? Guys, four to, literally four to 6,000 years, depending on the historian you talk to. So a very long time. Well, <clears throat> look, if you're going to settle in an area and there's, and there's plenty of space, you're going you're gonna to pick Rancho's Palos Verdes. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care how, what time of the uh, time in history. Uh, you're going to pick an area like that. And so that is exactly what happened. Now, of course, the uh, Europeans came rolling over the hill with their, like I say, their re reality, reality TV, their square dancing, and their love of uh, uh, hamburgers and hot dogs. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, unfortunately, that right there, right when they came over the horizon, uh, things were doomed. And uh, it didn't work out as well as it should have. They should have shared land and grown together, but history is what it is. And so now you've got a, a bunch of uh, <clears throat> fairly wealthy people living down in Rancho's Palos Verdes. So what does that mean to you and me? I mean, honestly, it's be great to have all kinds of money, but if it's just if you're just going to be living in your house down there, it takes. That's the thing, guys. Got to get to remember, it's on a peninsula. So if you, let's say you work in LA, you got to drive all the way down and then up this hill, uh, the peninsula is up on a hill and that's what helps create the views. It's up on a series of bluffs and, and hills <clears throat> from the flatlands where the poors like me live. Well, it's going to take you a while to get home and uh, it's great that you're doing it in a brand new Jaguar, but you still take it forever. You know, and uh, meanwhile, the rest of us are living life and uh, having fun while you're sitting in traffic. But that is, uh, that's just the state of affairs. So now, uh, what are the advantages of for regular peoples like you and me? Well, of course, it's going to be well kept. So one of the, one of the nature, one of the features, you could say, of Rancho's Palace Verdes is it's just so beautiful. And one of the reasons is, is that they spend money, they, however, taxes of tax base, or they just have a private army, I don't know what it is, but they've got the street sweepers that come around every day. Now, you probably have street sweeping once a week, is my guess, in your, in your area. Once a week, you got to move the cars, you got to move them to the other side of the road, and street sweeping, and then you got to move them back, and blah, blah, blah. Well, down there, they, first of all, you can't park on the street anyway. There's no parking, you cannot park, you have to have a driveway, of which most people do, okay, and, and very limited, let's say, uh, street parking. 
So what do you do if you're a visitor? Well, you gotta pretend, you gotta pretend that you are uh, somebody's guest. So what you're gonna wanna do is park in their driveway. Now here's the thing, <clears throat> they're so wealthy guys, they won't even know. Because they, uh, first of all, uh, they're inside. Uh, cutting up a movie, uh, you got movie directors living down there, they're working on uh, projects, they're uh, going over their wealth strategies. They're not worried about your Toyota Corolla in the driveway, because they don't even know. All right, <clears throat> so that's one thing to consider. But getting back to, they have this army of street sweepers that hit the streets every day, and, then, and the streets are sparkling. <laughs> they really are. And so that's a benefit to you in that when you drive down there to enjoy the views, to enjoy the rolling hills that lead to the ocean views, you get, you're gonna have a sparkling uh, street to drive on. Not always the case in Southern California. It's more like pothole heaven or pothole hell. So uh, that's uh, one thing to uh, keep in mind. Another benefit for visitors like you and me is that when you get down there, uh, well, actually, I should say one warning before you go down there is that when you get down there, uh, the gallon of gas that you would pay is three or four times what it would be on the flatlands. And the reason being, with a high-income neighborhood like that, they don't really care. So here, down here, let's call it $4 a gallon on the flats. Uh, and when you go up the hill, it's like sixteen, twenty dollars. It's like four or five times as much a gallon of gas. And the thing is, nobody, nobody blinks an eye. In fact, there's one gas station there that has tested this. They put it up to a hundred, two hundred dollars a gallon. So if you have a big tank, like if you have that one of the big old Mercedes that has a big tank, you know. Uh, let's say you're a money manager, you're uh, maybe 59 years old, you got a big old Mercedes with the big giant tank, it holds like 100 gallons, and the guy was charging like $1,000 a gallon. So it cost this guy $100,000 to fill up his tank, he didn't even know. He was, he was on the phone with one of his uh, team members at the hedge fund, and he filled up the tank. The gas station was charging a thousand dollars a gallon. The guy didn't even know, and he didn't care. He never even. He still doesn't know. But the thing is, you're gonna know when you get up there, and it's twenty dollars a gallon, and all the way up to a thousand in that one case. Uh, so what you want to do is fill your tank on the flats before you go up there, and the flats would be torrents, <laughs> the Del Amo Mall. Okay, Redondo Beach. Those are the, those are the flats. <laughs> those are the flats. Manhattan Beach. Uh, get, get your tank. Get your gas, gas tank filled up. All right, so now that you're up there with your full tank of gas and you're driving along in the clean streets, the main thing that you want to do is check out the homes. Now, here's the thing. It's not so much like Beverly Hills where they have a big house that you can see from the street because a lot of the homes are built to uh, blend into the terrain. So you have Scotch Pine and a lot of the pine trees that you might see in a beach area, Scruff Pine and that kind of, much like you see up in Pebble Beach and along and along there. And so the homes, I don't know if, I don't know if it's a uh, city ordinance or something, but they try to blend them in. So what people do is they build down. So in other words, above ground, you might see just a low roof line, but obviously a big home with a big property and lots of expensive cars out front. But what you don't see is 12 to 15 floors below of uh, this labyrinth of different levels, much like a uh, Dr. No character might have in a James Bond film, some kind of uh, international headquarters of the, the uh, head, hedge fund operations of these uh, wealthy people. Uh, maybe floors uh, 13 through 15 are their wealth team 
that uh, you have a staff of 50, 60 people that are trying to keep taxes from infiltrating into their uh, into their wealth. Uh, maybe floors 10 through 12 are where the kids live and they have their own uh, racquetball court down there, a hockey rink, bowling alleys. The kids have their own game room that's uh, nine or 10,000 square feet. And then uh, the, the first 10 floors, first nine or so floors, will be the living quarters, the kitchen, the, what you might normally find in a house, but of course it's spread over nine floors. The kitchen itself might be two of those floors. The dining area would be a floor, and, uh, and it goes on from there. Well, that's every home, guys. So that's why each home is two or three hundred million dollars. And I'm not even kidding. There are two or three hundred, maybe five hundred million dollar homes right next to each other. And you can't even tell from the street. Okay. So to see this, you might be able to, you might be able to see this stuff, but you're going to have to dress up as a maintenance worker, as a yard worker, as a TV repair person, as a cable TV technician, some kind of worker to get onto the site, and then you ask to use the bathroom. That's the key. You ask to use the bathroom, so you're gonna have to have your hard hat, your yellow jumpsuit, you're gonna have to have a sign on the back of your uh, jumpsuit that says tech, or service, or uh, TV wiring, something like that. Uh, maybe even, you know, I've heard of people food doing food delivery up there, and then they ask to use the bathroom, and then they just wander around. Now they, Here's the thing, they won't, they just are so rich, they just don't even know. Because you might be uh, one of the kitchen staff, in other words, part of their normal staff. Because usually people down in Palos Verdes, they have a staff of five or six hundred people that live live in the home in a special wing that is also below ground. Okay, and so they, if you just want more, especially if you look like you are some kind of worker of some kind, then you'll just blend right in. So then you can just wander around. Now, uh, you might want to take some photos, take some pictures, throw them up on Instagram. But remember, though, that by doing that, there's always some rat out there on social media that's going to bust you out and forward those pictures to the Rancho Par Palos Verdes PD. And the next thing you know, you got the, uh, the PD waiting out front for you uh, because because you just busted yourself out, all right? So what you want to do is make sure that you keep that on the down low until you, you get home. And then uh, you may want to start, start a, what they call a shadow account or an alt account, meaning alternative, uh, with some name like uh, Squeezy Boy 450 or uh, Gentle Giant 970, or whatever it is, whatever uh, your handle might be on your, and then throw up the photos and say, uh, if you, you know, you just gotta, you know what I'm saying? You just gotta keep it all uh, kind of covered up because otherwise you're gonna become a target and you'll never be able to go down there and wander around again. And especially if you leave a phone behind or you leave a, Dr. Pepper that you got at Kentucky Fried Chicken, if you leave it sitting on a shelf and you want to go back because you only drank half of it, and you're like, God dang, it was part of my combo with the with the $5 macaroni and cheese and popcorn chicken bowl, and I left my dang Dr. Pepper. So you'll go back and get it. But if you bust yourself out on social media by throwing up photos of the uh, drive-in movie theater they have uh, 400 feet below ground, well, then you're, you're, you're going to be in a bad state of affairs. So just some general advice. So, guys, that is a, just a very quick thumbnail sketch of what's going on down in Rancho Palos Verdes. And what you'll be able to view from public streets and sidewalks is these beautiful homes, is the beautiful rolling hills. And, of course, this expansive view of the Pacific that would make your eyes bug out of your head to the point where the people that you're with will say, hey, uh, your eyeballs or three or four inches outside of your head, you might, want to, you might want to push them back in there. And they came out with such speed uh, because you were so stunned by the beauty of the ocean that you might need to push them back in with the help of uh, either a vice grips or uh, putting a, 
some kind of cotton pad on top of your eyeball and pushing it with a, a kitchen plunger, bathroom plunger, or maybe a, uh, the blunt side of a, turn a hammer on its side and use the flat side of a hammer and push your eyeballs back in your head. I mean, it's up to you how you do it, but you will be amazed, guys, by the Pacific Ocean views down there. And um, so there you go. Let's leave it there. That gives you a quick sketch, a quick idea of what to expect. You're really going to enjoy it. And you're going to enjoy the further videos we're going to have on Rancho's Palos Verdes on how you, too, can make billions of dollars and perhaps buy a house down there with 15 floors below ground. Uh, we're going to tell you how to meet people and date them, uh, single people, how to meet sexy singles in Rancho Palos Verdes, no matter what age you are. Okay, and then we're going to talk about some of the famous people that came uh, from the area, some of the songs that have been written about Rancho, Pal Rancho Palos Verdes, and as well as, and this is an important one, the secret handshake that everybody knows that lives there. And in fact, you'll have to know it if you want to get a house mortgage, if you want to get jobs with people in the area, if you want to uh, be an independent contractor and do business down there, you're going to have to know that secret handshake. We're going to tell you how to do it. Come on back, guys. We have so many videos on this great community. Uh, see you then.